What would happen to us and our planet if it became as big as the sun? The diameter of the Earth is 8,000 miles. Crossing it is like driving back and forth across the USA three times. That doesn't sound like much, right? Well, how about repeating this journey 305 more times? Just imagine the gas expenses. This is the diameter of the sun, about 865,000 miles. Compared to our Earth, the sun is unimaginably huge. So what will happen to us if we catch up with it? There are four possible scenarios, depending on what we mean when we say the size of the sun. Scenario one. The Earth becomes as large as the sun, but its mass remains the same. A colossal planet with the mass of a teeny tiny Earth. First, say bye-bye to gravity. The more massive the planet, the stronger its gravity is, and vice versa. Such a lightweight planet simply wouldn't be able to attract anything to itself. Gravity creates all the heavy substances, everything from pebbles to entire continents, is held thanks to it. I believe you've already guessed what would happen without it. We'd all turn into dust particles. Yes, the Earth simply becomes a dust cloud. Oh, and to add fuel to the fire, the gravities of other planets stretch us to the sides, leaving no chance to collect our planet back together again. This scenario doesn't look very good, does it? By the way, even if the Earth somehow remained a planet, life couldn't have originated on it in these conditions. There would have been a considerable distance between the center of the Earth and its surface. And remember, the planet's mass is minimal, so no gravity. It just wouldn't be able to hold the atmosphere. And without the atmosphere, living organisms cannot develop. Not like it would have mattered. The Earth now is a cloud anyway. So now this cloud, weighing about 10 times heavier than Jupiter, is gathering in space. As a result, it collapses and turns into a star. Say hi to the new sun. Scenario two. This works both as a separate scenario and as a result of the previous one. The Earth becomes as large as the sun and gets its mass. Now we have two suns. We become a so-called binary star system. You know what that means. It's time to destroy our entire solar system. Imagine having two centers of mass in one system. The planet's orbits become unstable, perturbed by such a sudden change. Once they get closer to our ex-Earth, they collapse immediately, either from tidal forces or the ex-Earth's impact. Yes, even gas giants. Looking at you, Jupiter. Do you know which one survives and finally gets its revenge on us? Pluto. It would probably be the last remaining X planet in the entire system. It's too far away to notice any changes, except for an increase in the mass of the center of the system. So Pluto's orbit comes closer to our two star system, and that's it. The Earth and the Sun would have to accept that Pluto would be their only friend now. The protoplanetary disk that formed our system billions of years ago doesn't exist anymore. So no more planets can be created in our system. That's all well and good, but what about the Earth itself? What would life be like? Let's see. The nights and days now last longer because of the increase in the Earth's rotation time. There is probably a significant temperature drop in the North and South Poles. Even on our current small planet, they get sunlight scarcely. So if the Earth's size increased, the area of the poles receiving sunlight would decrease even more. On a positive note, there's a lot more space now. No more overpopulation. The planet's size is so huge that it would take you years to get from one point to another. Yeah, if you think about it, we'd probably be very lonely there. But hey, who knows? Maybe rockets would become our primary means of transportation. Yeah, that would have been cool. There are many vast uncharted areas that no human ever saw or visited. We also wouldn't know about the existence of many different civilizations and tribes. Centuries pass and many of us go away without ever meeting other people or learning about them. 
and that's if we can walk at all. Our bones cannot support our weight with such a considerable gravity, and our hearts have to work twice as hard to keep us alive. The birds can't fly anymore. Nothing can, precisely. All the existing trees fall down, and the new ones grow very close to the earth, like grass. Talking about the trees, how is our ecosystem doing? Well, not good. If we don't appreciate the environment on our small earth right now, imagine what would happen if we had such a massive space at our disposal. I even assume that our tons of garbage would have overpowered even those endless supplies of trees and clean water that we would have in our new large home. Our machines and robots have to be huge to do at least something now. That's because even ordinary farms now are the size of the U.S. states. I also assume that it would be much darker than we're used to. The Earth is so small now. Imagine what would happen when our planet becomes the size of the sun itself. Less sunlight means that we'd probably need an artificial sun. Also, the temperature differences on the planet's surface would be huge. If you're surprised, you probably underestimated the size of the sun. It's almost 110 times larger than the Earth. Our new Earth's equator equals our current Earth's 35 equators. Oh, and remember Pluto? Well, it's our only moon now. The first one would have probably crashed into us a long time ago, making us share the fate of the dinosaurs. In that case, all the water would likely evaporate from our planet. Anyway, there are thousands of bad possibilities, but let's just move on and focus on something good. Scenario 3 Same thing, but the Earth retains its density. Now this one is interesting. We're no longer a planet. We're a star now. In fact, we became even more massive than the Sun. Our planet now has a 3.9 solar mass because we need to balance our low density somehow. In short, it would be almost the same as in Scenario 2 but with more interesting long-term consequences. Since our Earth became four times as massive as the Sun, it would have burned its fuel quicker. Then it would evolve, and depending on the mass of its core, it either becomes a supernova or just blows off its outer layers to form a planetary nebula. If it goes supernova, the Sun that was so close to us blasts. And now there is just our ex-Earth, a lonely ball with a teeny tiny diameter of 12.5 miles. We're a neutron star. That is, a star made of degenerate neutron matter. That thing is ultra dense and spins very quickly, so you'd better stay away from it. If the Earth becomes a nebula, the Sun collects all the dust and adds it to its mass. Now we have a slightly more massive Sun and a white dwarf. The time passes, and Grandpa Sun lives out his life. It becomes a red giant after depleting the hydrogen in its core. It starts expanding and leaves its material, mostly hydrogen, on the white dwarf. That's us. When the matter reaches high enough temperatures and pressures, nuclear fusion happens. We become a nova. Yay, we're a star again. A lonely one, but a star nevertheless. So what happens next? You see, a star is a battle of opposing forces. One of them is gravity, which tries in every possible way to compress the lead into a small ball as much as possible. The second is a pile of fuel in the star's core, which, while burning, forms tons of energy and substantial hot temperatures. As long as these forces are in balance, the star lives. But when the star's fuel runs out, the star cools down. The pressure inside it drops. This means gravity has won. It squeezes the star with all its might, and as a result, the star goes, hooray! In just 15 seconds, the brightest light you've ever seen in your life flashes, and our ex-Earth goes supernova, leaving a stunning nebula behind. Anyway, don't worry. It's actually impossible for a rocky planet to be the size of the sun. Only other stars can be that large. But wait. Why is our Earth so small while the other planets are enormous? Do they just keep growing or do they stop at some point? The more mass you add, 
the more compression you get. As planets become more massive, the gravitational compression increases. They stop growing when their mass reaches roughly 1.7 times that of Jupiter, or 540 masses of the Earth. After that, adding more mass to a planet will make it smaller, because the compression becomes stronger. In other words, our little thought experiment is impossible.